was a very, very effective push. Hello guys, and welcome to a new Broken Arrow video today by me, Vulcan. In this one, I wanted to make it somewhat of a tutorial. So what I'm going to be doing is kind of talking through the game as much as I can, giving as much information as I can uh, to do with the game and how to get started. And I'm going to be doing so whilst using the default deck. So if you don't have any decks in the game so far, this will give you an idea of how to use at least the US deck uh, straight off the bat without having to build your own. So so we're going to be starting with the F-18 Hornet here. I've already deployed that by left clicking it in the air tab here and then left clicking on the map in order to bring it out. Now what we're going to want to do is make sure we don't fly straight into the enemy. What you want to do is kind of move to the side and as soon as you see enemy air targets you want to hit your afterburner on the bottom right here and you'll hear the sonic boom and then you're going to want to make sure that you target the enemy forces. Now, you can't specifically target your missiles. Your aircraft will automatically target uh, whatever's in front of it. Now, in this case, I'm going to be pulling away on purpose because I want to make sure that we're in a good range to actually use the missile. And the Sidewinder, when you're too close to an enemy aircraft, say you're following it, you won't be able to actually fire your missiles. So you do need to be at a sort of distance in order to do so. Now we have a couple of units over here that we're going to be going for. I am going to right click them so that my Hornet tries to gun run them. That is the only thing that you can kind of direct by right clicking on a unit. You'll fly straight towards them. And these poor helicopters here are going to be having a bad time unless my F-18 decides to go in a different direction. Uh, probably couldn't line up its gun there in time. Regardless, that's done. So we're going to press X, which is how I have bound return to base. Uh, the return to base key by default I'm not sure of, but I have it bound to X. Uh, you can click it in the bottom right here and your plane will leave. You'll get a refund. Now you get a refund uh, based on how much you use the aircraft. So if you used up all of all of its ammo then you'll get like a part like half refund well it depends really how much the value of the ordnance is compared to the value of the aircraft but you'll get a percentage back based on how much uh, ordnance you used from the aircraft if the aircraft is damaged you'll also receive less points when you sell it if you bring the aircraft out and you don't use it at all and then you sell it then you get a full refund so in the case of like helicopters and stuff that you bring in and then sell uh, you'll get a full refund because they don't use any weapons well they they might use their machine gun i'm not actually sure if that would affect the price though regardless we have 1600 points as you can see and you're probably wondering well Vulcan, why haven't you deployed anything but truth be told it's not actually that much of a big deal if you float in this game there is no real like rush in this game and taking your time is perfectly fine as long as you do get something out within like the first few minutes so what we're going to do now since we're kind of behind uh, everybody else is we're going to use the Super Stallion which is a very big helicopter to bring in some forces straight to the front. Now we're going to need AA, we're going to need AT and we're going to need anti-infantry. Those are the three things that you're going to need uh, when you're air dropping or heli dropping or whatever because you need anti-air to stop helicopters and aircraft from just dunking on your units as soon as they land. You're going to need AT to deal with tanks doing the same, and you're going to need anti-infantry to stop infantry doing the same. So the way that we do that is we select the Super Stallion here, so we left click on the helicopter first, and then we're going to select Marine Raiders, good anti-infantry. We're going to select the Tow 2 team, which is good anti-tank. We're going to select the Mech Rifle AA, because they are good anti-air. And we're also going to be able to bring in a Lav AD. Actually, we can't bring in a Lav AD because it would put us over the weight limit so what we're going to do instead is take away the mech rifle and that might leave enough room <laughs> okay it doesn't so we're going to remove the marine raiders we're going to bring in the lab ad instead and then we're going to bring in force recon uh, to make up for the lack of marine raiders because force recon is still pretty good against enemy infantry and they also have pretty decent launcher in the form of the at4 so that's going to be our setup and we'll make sure to bring that in so we're just going to left click now my super stallion will ride in 
Uh, since we still have plenty of points, we'll do the same with the Venom. Now, the Venom can't really carry many people. If you hover over the card, you'll see uh, it says how much weight it can carry. So 2,500 on the far right. And then next to that is the number of seats. So that's how many people it can carry. So in this case, Force Recon, Scout Snipers. Because it's Force Recon, six-man squad, Scout Snipers, two-man squad. So we'll go ahead and click that in. And we're going to do the same again. Recon is super, super important in this game. Do not understate how important it is. Uh, make sure to bring it up as much as possible. So my teammates have managed to get a really good position further up. They are being harassed quite significantly at the moment by enemy aircraft. So we might want to bring in some extra AA in order to shut that down. So I'm going to be bringing in, in this case, the Patriot. Now this Patriot, it does come uh, with four missiles because this is the upgraded variant. So we're going to make sure to bring in two of those and we'll help shut down the enemy aircraft. We are going to see that a ballistic missile has been fired by our team. It is being intercepted by enemy radar AA. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we can probably make use of the Prowler. The Prowler has seed missiles and that can target radar AA. Now, the only thing that can intercept ballistic missiles is radar AA. So we know that this Prowler has targets to fire at. So we're going to try and do just that. Meanwhile, I am going to want to select my helicopters, press U, and then give them a left click drag to these buildings. So press U, left click, drag to the building. What will happen is the helicopter will land where you press U, and then it will let the men that unload run automatically into a nearby building, the building that you dragged over. Now with this prowler, what we're going to do is we're going to send it into low altitude. So we're going to do V to change air altitude to low. That's going to help those lose track. And as soon as the prowler is able to fire, we can go up and about and hopefully uh, kill some of this radar AA. Now we did manage to do so. So we're going to go back down again. Unfortunately for me, it doesn't have four missiles. So I'm used to the Prowler having four of these harm missiles. We did see it fire two over here. I was hoping that it would fire two here and then it would have two left to fire over here. And in which case we would have got both of those sets of kills. But the thing to learn there is basically that you really should fly low towards your target. And then when you get close to your target with a prowler you go up in the sky let it get a good angle with its missile and then you can bring it back down low you can do that with pretty much all aircraft and i would definitely recommend it now whilst that was going on the t-15 did come up on this right hand side and start to kill my helicopters so i've got to be a little bit careful we're just going to bring them out the back of that building so they stop getting fired up and what we can do is maybe set up an F-35 strike. Now this is something I get asked all the time, uh, and that is how to use precision guided munitions. So the way in which we do that is the F-35, it has two LJ dams on this particular setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly towards this unit, the T-15, and we're going to press P on it. I'll press P twice and then left click twice. As we get close, we'll click the laser button and it will laser on target. Unfortunately, we didn't kill it, but we did kill our own guys. Our own guys were dead anyway, so it's not too bad. And we're going to send it low after the strike so that it doesn't get shot at by more radar. And we can try and take advantage of that. Bear in mind that he managed to kill a scout sniper and a force recon, which is 150 points worth of infantry. The Barbarus itself is worth 250 points, so if we manage to take it out, then we're actually ahead in kills uh, for that trade, which would be really, really good. So we're going to give it a go. I just need my Vorkon here to get their AT4 on target. And there we go. Boom. Down goes the T-15 Barbarus. It's nice of my opponent there to play along. So <laughs> usually what would happen in that situation is the T-15 probably shouldn't have still been there. The opponent should be moving it back to supply to fix it up and then my entire endeavor would have been a fail. But in this case uh, we managed to pull it off so that's great. On this right hand side I've just noticed that big push here from the T-14 and the T-15. So now this is a lot of investment into points. And that's another thing you probably want to pay attention to, especially with the Terminator behind it. So each of the T-15 Barbaros, 250 points. Terminator, 250 points. Armata, 400 points. That's a lot of points. 
So we're going to want to get a Harrier in to try and deal with that. Now, in order to use air-to-ground missiles, you want to go preferably into low altitude uh, so that it can fire them automatically, or you can try and use a strafing run, uh, which will direct it in the direction you want to go, and then it will use them as well. Now, since we can see all these helicopters on the right-hand side here, we will bring in a Hornet to go and play with those. But I'm hoping, with any luck, we can get these missiles to work. If not, it's unfortunate. And we'll have to use a strafe and run instead. When you use a strafe and run, your aircraft will go up in the sky. So, let's see if it uses them this time around. We're going to get nice missiles into the back of the Armata there at least, but it looked like the building got in the way of the other missiles, unfortunately. But we have managed to do quite a lot of damage on the right hand side here with the Hornet. It's already used up both of its stingers, so we're actually going to send it back. Now, a lot of this doesn't have support, so what we can do is actually bring up these Super Cobras and clean up the rest of this stuff on the right hand side. And meanwhile, my Toad 2 is trying to do its best on the front line to engage all of this armor. That's good. And since we have so many points now, uh, let's go ahead and try and use some armor. So we'll bring in a couple of the set V3 trophies, and I'm also going to bring in the set V2. Now, you'll notice when I'm bringing in units, the income that I have drops. And basically the way that it works is and the more value of units you have on the map, the less income you get over time. And it kind of acts as a little bit of a pseudo catch-up mechanic, similar to manpower in Company of Heroes. And yeah, it kind of just keeps you from snowballing out of control if you get ahead. But it is a good idea sometimes to kind of not invest too much into units so that you can save a large amount of points and bring in multiple high value units at the same time. And that is very much a viable strategy, but it very much will depend on how well your teammates are doing. But Super Cobras on the right hand side here have done exceptionally well. We do need to be a little bit careful. I'm trying to kind of take a little bit of a wide berth here so that the infantry in these buildings don't shoot us down. I'm going to send one closer to reveal them and that will allow us to finish them off. There we go. Perfect. I see an airdrop potentially on the back there. It didn't drop so he's in a bit of a bad spot. Let's go ahead and bring in an AH-1Z Viper rather than Super Cobra. These have Hellfires and we're going to be able to take out the uh, T-14s with those potentially. I'm just going to check my air tab, see if my Harry is ready to go, because that would also be a good choice here, and actually a much more reliable choice, because the Maverick missile is uh, probably going to be more reliable than the Hellfire against the um, active protection that T-14s use. Active protection is super strong in this game at the moment, so do bear that in mind. If we can, I'd like to use the supply that is my teammates. One thing I would say in this game is do not be shy of using your teammates' supply. Just make sure that if you do use it up, that you do bring in some of your own uh, to kind of make up for it. You know, kind of trade out that supply. If their supply is already in position and in a good position and you want to use it, then just use it. Uh, just make sure that you kind of compensate them later on uh, with your own. Uh, so that there is nothing uh, wrong with that at all. All right, let's uh, get the Viper into position here as the M1A2 engages. Should be able to get some good hits. The T14 Armata there, trying to use active protection. Oh, I just sent the turret flying on that thing. Very, very cool. And my Hellfire from that uh, from the Viper still firing away. My tanks arriving shortly as well. So we're just going to tell them to drive up the road. And this is how you want to use your helicopters. Now a lot of people will say the helicopters are underpowered. They really aren't. you just got to make sure that you use them at range and in situations where your opponents do not have AA. So a good example was here. My, my Cobras, which I can sell now because I don't need them anymore, um, did absolute work. And the nice thing about our situation here 
is I'm just going to pull across and we'll chase down these T-14s. And hopefully we can shoot the one that's damaged as it pulls away. Nice, we got it. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to have to be careful of this KA-52 as I do not have any of my own AA. All right, let's just go ahead and smoke one of these. Smoke will block eight gems that require direct line of sight, but it will not necessarily block guided munitions. We took a lot of damage there, so we're going to have to be extremely careful. For example, <laughs> the T90M managed to get a shot onto one of my damaged units. I definitely brought that a little bit too close to the front line. You can see that it took a lot of damage. Luckily, the Super Stallion, pretty strong helicopter with a lot of health. So we're able to take a couple of hits and continue onwards. But what I'm going to do, meanwhile, is move up my mech rifle AA. I will try and maybe get into line of sight of the KF-52 here, actually. Ah, I didn't smoke that in time. I really need to learn my smoke button keybind. That's another great thing to learn. Um, go into the menu. One of the first things you can do in this game, really, is go into the menu and look at the keybinds and try and learn them as you go along. You know, it doesn't have to happen all in one game. You know, just for one game, focus on. Oh, I'm going to use the smoke button, and I'm, I'm going to do it um, automatic, or like I'm going to just focus on making sure that I smoke uh, with a key bind rather than by clicking it and then you learn that key bind over time then the next game maybe try a different one and then you'll eventually start building up the muscle memory in this case what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try and unload the supply further up the way in which I'm going to do that is I've set it to low altitude so that it won't get hit by enemy AA because there's a lot of high rises here so a lot of things blocking line of sight that's going to allow me to bring this right up to where this tow 2 team is and I can get them loaded now there is AA over on the left side as we saw briefly great thing about the Venom transport is it does have it actually very high optics for a transport helicopter just going to be microing that down the road and then as soon as I think it's at a safe distance we can tell it to raise altitude again and fly off the map. And the reason you want to raise altitude again is because it's a lot faster when it is in high altitude as opposed to low altitude. My patriots there <laughs> absolutely destroying that aircraft and the Buratino absolutely destroyed my infantry including my supply, which is sad. But at least my TOE-2 managed to get some missiles at least. All right, next thing to do, uh, probably rebuild my tank army. Uh, we also want to make sure we move our Patriots because they did just fire. And there's a good chance that if our opponent has like long range artillery, that they will try and shoot it afterwards. So we want to make sure we move our AA after firing every single missile. That might seem tedious, but trust me, it will save your bacon a lot of times. This P Vance. <laughs> Gonna get one of my stuff killed there, unfortunately. Anyway, let's put the Patriot radars back on. I do like to have uh, Patriot radars on by default. Uh, there is obviously the threat of seed. Um, when a seed aircraft does come in, then you obviously want to try and turn it off as quickly as possible and the best way to do that would be to group them so you press control one in this case and you'll see the little group just, uh, turn up on the side here so the number one highlighted uh, if i press one when i don't have anything selected it will reselect them and then i can select radar um, i would need to have it bound in order to do it really quickly but in this case i can just press one and then click the radar button if i wanted to now i do need to find that because it is a very important button all right, well, next thing we can look at doing is probably just bringing in more Abrams. Abrams are super, super strong right now. 
A lot of people say that the Russian vehicles are super strong, but to be honest, the American Abrams is probably the best tank when it has the trophy system. It gets four charges of active protection and then is very, very useful. And the other thing that we're going to do is potentially just build up this supply here. I'm not going to put it on the point though because it just makes it very vulnerable. I'm actually going to put it I'm going to put it behind this building. So I'm going to bring in an LVSR which is a large tra uh, transport vehicle to bring us in a bunch of supply and we will wait for it to arrive. At the moment our teammates uh, kind of developed their position on this left hand side they're slowly building up to push on that flag. On the right hand side here a bunch of T90s pretty scary. There is radar AA on the right so what I'm going to do I'm going to bring in a Prowler we're going to bring in a Harrier. We have them both fly low so we're going to select them we're going to click the change altitude and you'll see the altitude on the right here go down when I click that. There's two bars on either side of these portraits of the pilots. One is speed and one is altitude. And the altitude one, you can keep an eye on how high they are without actually having to without actually having to micro them. Oh, I'll go, I'll go and look at them. I mean, right, the Harrier is ready to go now. With the strafing run, it has to go high. But what we're going to do is go high with the Prowler at the same time. Fortunately, that AA does not have its radar on. So we're going to come back down low and we're going to tell the Prowler to leave. And it looks like my Harrier here not going to be able to get its shots on. And the Akula manages to land both of its stingers. That's unfortunate. You're flying too close to helicopters with stingers is actually a death sentence for aircraft. It really is. Stingers are super, super good. Um, by stingers, I just mean... <laughs> like air-to-air -air infrared missiles from helicopters. I don't particularly mean the Stinger itself before people get funny in the comments. I just call them Stingers by default. Okay, let's go ahead and sell this LVSL. You don't need to keep the supply truck around unless you want to move a certain amount of supply, but for the big supply vehicles it will pick up all of the supply. In order to split the supply you're going to want to use a smaller supply. So in this case we'll bring in an LV LAV um, L, which can only carry 2,500 supply. And that will allow us to split this supply. Now I'm going to bring it in with supply as well so that we can drop off these on the front line by the M1A2 for example. And we can use that as a base to fix up. Anytime that gets low I can send the LAVL back to the big supply dump, pick up some more supply and send it forwards. And that's a good way to make sure that you have supply close to the front line without being in line of sight of the enemy. Uh, but meanwhile, what we're going to do is just continue building up the tank armor, army. Our M1A2 set B3 is taking a little while to come back because it did get destroyed previously and it's worth a lot of points, so it makes it take a long time to replenish. But when that's available and we bring it in, then we'll think about making a push because we want to create a critical mass that is well supported. So in this case, what we're going to need to support that is an LAV. We already have the Patriots in position, so that's fine. And potentially more infantry uh, so that we can move through these buildings uh, efficiently. So the way that I'm going to do that is we're going to select uh, the helicopter again. We're going to bring in the TOW 2 team, the last TOW 2 team. We're going to bring in the Marine Raiders because they are really, really strong. Uh, we'll bring in some more Mech Rifle AA because they're fantastic at taking down the new helicopters. And we'll bring in some Cavalry Scouts and Scout Snipers. Perfect, that will do. Good bunch of infantry in, ready to go. That's a large amount of tanks. I think my Harrier managed to get out alive, so it shouldn't take too much longer to come in. And this TOW 2 is out of ammunition though, so I'm just going to move that away. But the infantry here is doing a lot of damage to these tanks, so we will peek and we'll start taking shots. Hopefully we can pick off the Barbarous. That would be great. Perfect. I'll take that. Barbarous worth 250 points. So a good trade for us. Oh, 
let's have the LAVL move back. SU-34 coming in for a strike, but we're not going to let that happen. Big double Baratino strike coming in on that position. All of that infantry just got decimated. Oh, and <laughs> the uh, incendiary on top. Why not? Okay, cool. Well, unfortunately, my teammate there just lost a lot to that artillery. That is one of the threats of keeping your units too close together, <laughs> particularly when it comes to infantry. Infantry can be taken out very fast by strikes such as that. But I do have my own infantry arriving. That will be in a good position to push up. So, I'm going to get our toe 2 up. I'm going to make sure my sniper is in a good position on the left here. I might also use the left side to push up the Marine Raiders as well. So the LAVL, if you want to pick up supply, we want to right click this. It will put 2,500 into the LAVL because that's how much it can carry. I'm going to take it over to this Patriot just so that I can get it more missiles. Uh, as soon as the Patriot's reloaded, we can pick it up again and take it over to the other Patriot. I do potentially want to move the Patriot because it was already... Um, well, it had already fired. But honestly, I'm not sure if I want to... Like, I'm basically just being greedy and lazy. <laughs> I should move it. <laughs> uh, this M1A2 deciding to show its rear armor is really not a good idea. It's unfortunate. He had eyes on the supply there, which is really bad. So we will move that back. There's also a good chance that he was just targeting this building, and it uh, it just got blown up as well. But a lot of this stuff is damaged, so I now have to be very careful. But what I can do is just keep popping smoke. And then hopefully back on to the supply here in order to get fixed up. Uh, we're going to move my Patriots back now as well because they are in a very bad position. I'm just going to give them direct drive orders so they don't reveal themselves on the road. Right, that supply should be used up before it gets attacked by artillery, so I'm not going to worry about moving it again because the repairs on these tanks do cost a lot. What we're going to do meanwhile is just get ready for that smoke to clear and engage the enemy tanks. And with any luck, we might be able to get a straight through run in with our Harrier. So what I'm going to do is take both of these to the big supply to get them reloaded. Nice. Good kill on the T90 there. Make sure that goes low altitude. We got hit by the Vilba a couple of times, unfortunately. It was probably an Igles that's only fired once. Now that's going to be firing at where the supply was. So let's move away from that. We'll go get some more supply from over here. Get my Patriot back into position in while. some cool tank warfare going on right now. Alright, the other thing that we might want to do here is invest in an M7 A4. The B-Fist is really good because it has 1,200 optics. That's really nice for like accompanying your tanks. Uh, I'm just going to drive my tanks back to the supply. There's really no reason for me to uh, just leave it here. Although that one just got damaged. So, it's tracked. We're going to have to bring supply to it. It has one more smoke available. Already there. Hopefully, we can get over there as soon as possible. Yeah, these two can move back to my big supply dump. We've got nice flanking coming in from our 
teammates. They are getting very close to that objective on the left. Got 15 minutes left on the game. So plenty of time to finish off our enemy. So what I'm doing right now with my 960 points, I'm just trying to look at something we could we could buy in. I need to bring in my other M1 A2. Oh nice. My teammates actually brought up the LAVL, but hopefully it doesn't get hit. I'm not sure if that's going to be close enough if he drops it there. I'm going to drive up ahead of the M1A2. We're going to drop my supply here, and then we're going to drive over from front and use the smoke from the LAV. So that we can keep that covered. Hopefully we'll be able to fix it in time. Meanwhile, yeah, we'll wait for our tanks to arrive. I'm not going to buy any more tanks. We are just going to invest more into our marines and marine raiders. Bring in the marines with the Amtraks. And maybe Shorad for some anti-air against helicopters. We could also invest into the HIMARS. Let's do that. Just gonna smoke off since we resupplied our smoke. Hopefully that's enough to fully repair that. Because we need to fully repair it before it will fix any criticals. In this case the red cog means that it can't move. But now it's fully repaired, all of the criticals get fixed, and we can get out of there. So I'm gonna tell it to reverse. I have my reverse key set to G because it's the same as in Warno. And you're always going to want to reverse out of situations like that. Now, the issue we have here is this supply might trigger the other supply. And that would be very bad. Uh, but no real way for me to get out of there right now without trying to sacrifice the LAVL. And again, we could also bait A to GM. So this is actually a good way to get rid of, like, Cornets, for example. If they're all in the high-rises and stuff. So you can, I can, like, sit this here on the edge. And the Cornet will fire at me. And then I just dip behind the building. And then they hit the building like that <laughs> and then you move back out and you let it fire at you again and then you move back and you just end up wasting all of the missiles very very easily so again they're coming in from the right there as long as you know where they're shooting from this is pretty easy to do kind of cheesy to be honest but using cover to my advantage, I suppose. The way that the enemy would counter this is to quite simply just allow it, or well, basically stop it from firing. <laughs> Not allow it, but the opposite. <laughs> stop it from firing. And it looks like it's used up all its HM. Yeah, it's perfect, so we can just go ahead and start roaming down this street with all that Abrams. We'll bring up our Ram tracks to support. The Patriots will put forwards and turn on their radar. We will shift click the radar. Oh, it doesn't look like you can shift click the radar. Regardless, it's in an okay position. Looks like I annoyed them enough for them to want to kill that art <laughs> kill that with uh, artillery. Now they have a lot of artillery, so we're gonna wanna keep moving. to do their thing. I'm just going to let that use up the rest of that supply. And we'll send it back over here. i got to be careful of this guards unit. 
guards unit is really scary in this situation because they have the best AT launcher in the game. Ah, that's dead. And we can take this supply. Do repair. Be a bit careful of them shooting it. That's for sure. But we'll use it while we can. There's a good chance they'll just blow up the supply dump. Now, where's my Shorad? I did bring up a Shorad, I just forgot to bring it with me. Got it self tracked. Right, we managed to save three of them. That those helicopters really messed me up because I didn't bring the shore out with me. Big mistake on my part. Now we're going to send this Abrams back to the supply dump that does need topping up, so we'll go ahead and bring in a load of supply. We'll keep the two healthy ones here because we have done a lot of damage to their forces. So we want to somewhat continue these engagements and maintain our advantage if we can. Unfortunately, it looks like that one's going to have the die. I did bring in my high Mars earlier. It would have been a good idea to use that during these engagements. But it is easy to forget about units when the engagements kick off like this. This one's out of smoke, so I'm actually going to keep my other one nearby. So that we can smoke it and hopefully keep it alive. I'm waiting for my big transport to arrive. Meanwhile, what I'm going to do is actually bring up another supply vehicle. Because in these sorts of intense engagements, we're going to have to cycle our supply. So have one unit that is further up while the other's at the back. And then as soon as the one at the front's used up, we can switch them out. Meanwhile, we'll use up our other Hi Mars. Uh, we're going to press P in order to hit this Terminator. And maybe that'll get intercepted, but we'll see. Alright, let's let the lav pick up some supply. Maybe we'll have a chance to get the set fixed up, but it looks like artillery is already coming in on it, so we're just going to assume that's dead. And what we'll do is make sure we have a Viper ready to accompany my other tanks as we push back forwards. The other thing that we should probably make good use of is the uh, Marine Raiders here. <laughs> Bring in a couple of those with the Super Stallion. See if we can get some supply up for this guy. Oh dear. That's not good. Okay. Alongside our tanks this time around, I am going to want to use some lab ADs. I actually prefer the lab over the short adbush because it does have that uh, gun, the GAL 12. Gonna leave a supply dump there. I can head back. The Viper. This one doesn't have any air to air. Whilst the Akula probably does. Gotta be careful of that. I 
Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, do a drop with the Super Stallion here. Our teammates are very close on that one. We're obviously dealing with a lot of heavy armor on this side. We have traded okay, I would say. I've just let myself be exploited by helicopters when I didn't have AA far enough up. So that is my bad. But we shall not let that happen again. We'll make sure to have the lab AD with us. And we'll make sure to make good use of the high marks. into buildings here, ready to engage enemy tanks if they push towards us. Alright, meanwhile, we get the Marine Raiders forwards, tell the Super Stallion. Alright, let's move forward with the tanks. Nice, good kill. Good kill. Out that barbarous. Okay, these snipers could certainly be helping us better if they move up. So we'll go ahead and do that. can fire at the Armata. The Abram should be able to 2v1 the Armata. The Armata in this situation is actually pretty good because it can use its guided missile and then its main gun very quickly afterwards. But he can't move the Armata back because it's damaged. As long as we trade here, I'm okay with this. Uh, looks like that. Tina kind of made it impossible. Unless it runs out of active protection, the tow 2 can finish it off. Haha, <laughs> the MI-28 with the MT infantry missile doing the job. I can drop her. Ballistic missile on it. Uh, let's not fire from next to the <laughs> ammo dump, though. Okay, it already died, that's fine. Oh, we'll hit this building then instead. Okay, we're a little bit light on vehicles. Continue pushing forwards. But we do have plenty of infantry, so as long as I use the lav effectively, we should be able to shoot down the helicopter. Maybe, just maybe, we can get some infantry onto this point. I think the key here will be to get some logistic vehicles to the front line to fix up my infantry before we make the assault. We've got one minute though. So it's really time to pull the trigger if we want to win. Infantry to run forwards here on the left. Looks like our team managed to get in there. 
tire? It looks like we've won. And with the position that we were in and the way that we were trading throughout this game, it did look like we should be able to get on this right hand side, but these guys on the right definitely put up a good fight. On the left, it looked like our teammates just about managed to get in there in time. So that's great. Maybe my Marines can run up and get in on the left side, but we might have just left it a little bit too long to push forwards with those units. And there we go. <laughs> we managed to get the most kills in the game. 41 kills, 33 losses with the base deck that is given to you at the start of the game. Like as soon as you open up the open beta, this is the deck that you will be given. And if you don't have time to make your own or you just want to like jump into a game and try it out, then hopefully this video will help you and give you a good idea of how to make use of the units that you have available. Just remember to use altitude on your aircraft, make sure to use smoke on your tanks, like just remember to use the special abilities that you have with your units. Laser guidance is a little bit more difficult to get the hang of, so don't worry too much if you're struggling with it, but uh, there are a few keys that you need to remember. T is fire position, P is for precision strike, which is guided missiles, and then, um, yeah, just right click, left click, kill the enemy. Easy. <laughs> All right. Oh, hopefully that helps. If there's any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments, but that's it for now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah,